So hello friends. So today I'll be it's a World Stroke Day. So I was coming in a flight from Mumbai. So I thought I should uh, commemorate this by touching about what is latest in stroke. Uh, so I'll be reviewing two new uh, articles that have come in stroke. So which would be a good one to review for this World Stroke Day, which happens to be on 29th October 2022. Um, so I wish to acknowledge my colleague, Dr. Ayub Jacob. In fact, he presented this during our journal review. So I'll be taking you through. It's just a very brief video, brief overview. So I won't dwell into the whole detailing because that would be more of neurologist domain. So what intensivists need to know about the latest in stroke? So this was an article which, as you see, came in July 2022. And both these articles came in Lancet in the same issue in July. And these two studies were done pretty much in the similar time. So one is a SWIFT direct study. Uh, and this study was done in Switzerland, US. It was a multicentric trial, Canada and France. So it was basically, this study was to compare because the whole idea is now to compare whether a thrombectomy or a thrombus extraction with the device versus bridging therapy. So when we say bridging therapy, it is thrombolysis, systemic thrombolysis with antiplase with clot extraction. So this study was to look whether just a clot extraction when there is a major vessel in part is good enough or is a bridging therapy. When we say bridging, it is a combination of IV thrombolysis with the clot extraction, whether this is better. So it was basically to answer this. Preceding this, there were three other trials. So we'll not dwell into this. So these are the two latest, which has a good, reasonably good take-home message. So if intensivists know this, should be good enough. And this was a non-inferiority study. So this basically to see whether clot extraction alone would be non-inferior to IV thrombolysis plus clot extraction. So this was a multicentric randomized controlled trial. And as uh, the indication would be for a clot extraction, it will be a major artery infarct, including ACA, MCA territory. So these were the strokes that were involved for this trial. And it was one is to one randomization in this study. So the primary endpoint was to look at functional independence. So the functional independence, obviously, most of the listeners would know, would be ranked by modified ranking score. So the lower the score, better it is. Higher the score, it's a poor uh, independence. So modified ranking score of 0 to 2 at 90 days was looked at as a primary endpoint. And the study was done between 7th May 2015 to 29th November 2017 in those four countries. So Switzerland, Canada, USA, and France. So they had 408 patients. So 201, uh, in fact, they screened around 5,000 patients. And 408 patients they took for the, uh, who fulfilled the criteria and they took them for this study. 201 were in thrombectomy study where clot extraction was done alone. And 207 where they got a bridging therapy. I'll use the word bridging where they use thrombolysis, antiplase, and clot extraction, thrombectomy. So if you look at the primary endpoint, which is modified ranking score at 90 days, there was no significant difference between thrombectomy. As you see, the confidence interval is non-significant. They looked at symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage because one would argue giving a thrombolysis with thrombectomy, hemorrhage would be high. Even there, there was no significant difference between the thrombectomy group and the thrombolysis or the bridging therapy. But what they found is when they looked at the reperfusion, the successful reperfusion was better where thrombolysis with clot extraction was done. So, and it was statistically significant. As you see, confidence interval was significant in this particular group. So, reper although the successful reperfusion was better with bridging therapy, where they used thrombolysis with clot extraction, but the functional outcome appeared similar in both groups. So, the conclusions the author made was authors made was that the clot extraction or thrombectomy was non-inferior to a bridging therapy where you use thrombolysis with thrombectomy. So this was the conclusions. So, but still one could argue since reperfusion is better, still we should possibly adopt this strategy of bridging therapy. Then this particular, the second trial came, but which is now again, a very similar sort of a study called the direct safe study. This came from the Australia, New Zealand group, and this included patients even from Asia. So China, Australia, New Zealand, and Vietnam. So the study was done in these four countries. It's a multicentric randomized control trial. So this possibly will give us more conclusive answers as to maybe bridging therapy is much safer. Because as you see in the previous trial also, the reperfusion was better with bridging. All the functional outcome was uh, non 
non-different or non-inferior. So let's look into this trial. So the trial was exactly similar to the previous trial. Here they used a trio device. But previous trial, they used alteplase. Here, they could have used alteplase or connectoplase. So they used either compared between the thrombectomy versus uh, bridging therapy. Again, it was a non-inferior study. Multicentric randomized control trial, one is to one. So very similar to the previous trial. Both trials done during similar times. And both trials were published in Lancet in the same issue. So the primary endpoint, again, was functional independence, looking at modified Ronkin score at uh, 0 to 2 at 90 days. Uh, and this was a little later trial. As you see, the recruitment happened between 2018 and 2021. And the number of patients were little less, 295, because there you had 408 patients. Here it was 295 patients, 148 in the thrombectomy group and 147 in the combination group of alteplase, bar tenectoplase with thrombectomy. And here they looked at modified Rankin score, which is a functional outcome of which a good functional outcome seem to be better in a bridging therapy. So, which is again making a strong signal that bridging therapy, because the previous trial showed that reperfusion was better, but there was no difference in the functional outcome. But this trial, which came from Australasia, shows that the functional outcome was better with bridging therapy. As you see, the statistical significance was attained and uh, non-inferiority was not established in this, because non-inferiority they took as 0.1 here, and that was not established. So, functional outcome was better in bridging therapy. They looked at symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage. Like in the previous study, there was no difference between these two groups, thrombectomy and the, and the bridging therapy. They looked at the death rate because there they looked at reperfusion. Here they looked at the mortality. Even mortality, there was no difference between the bridging therapy and the thrombectomy group. And that was non statistically non-significant. So the conclusions author made was this particular, because both are non-inferiority, because the previous one showed that it was non-inferior, although reperfusion was better with bridging therapy. Here, this trial failed to show non-inferiority of isolated thrombectomy. And in fact, the authors go on to suggest that the guidelines, this trial should be a part of uh, creating a guidelines where bridging therapy should be a part of the guideline is what the authors suggest. So it should be bridging therapy. So these are the two latest trials on the World Stroke Day, which a possible intensivists should know. So, and if you know the TNETs of this, that should be good enough for, uh, for us. So right now, the message would be the combination of the bridging therapy is the way to go with regards to large vessel infarcts and the isolated thrombectomy may not hold promise at this point of time with the current evidence available. So these are the two trials possibly you could remember on the World Stroke Day and possibly this should be the standard of care at this point of time. And even in my hospital, this is what we follow, bridging therapy, where if it's a large vessel infarct, there would be a thrombectomy along with systemic thrombolysis. So thank you, folks. So I think if we can take home some lessons from this, I think we would have done justice on this World Stroke Day. So thank you one and all.